Jazzcast Pros. Have you ever wondered about your astrology and how it plays into your business? Have you ever felt disconnected from your sign because of stereotypes? Are there parts of you that are interested in astrology, but you're not quite sure where to start? Maybe it feels a little woo woo. Well, then this is the episode for you. In today's episode of High Vibe Table Talks, I interview Tati, who is an astrologer and brand strategist. She does the beautiful work of helping you find a deeper connection with self and build a business and life around it. Welcome to High Vibe Table Talks, the podcast to help you, the cautiously ambitious woman, remove mental barriers and take action now so that you can achieve your high vibe desires. I'm your host, Rashawn Hargrave, and I have taken my background of education and my decade working for a startup and turned it into High Vibe Masterminds. Every week, I share insights from myself and my guests to help you navigate the messy middle. Yes. So my name is Taddy. I'm an astrologer and brand strategist, and I serve wellness entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs, really wanting to grow their businesses, grow their brands, and also just learn more about themselves. So how did you get started in that space? So I went through a really bad breakup quite a few years ago, and this was a breakup that really broke me. It was with someone I thought I was going to marry. And it was devastating. I was curious about astrology before this, understanding my moon sign and my rising sign. But after that breakup, I was like, I need to get a reading done by a professional astrologer and understand why this happened because it was kind of a shocking breakup and I didn't really see it coming. So I wanted to understand, okay, there's something I'm not seeing maybe someone externally can see why this had to happen. And after that reading, I was completely mind blown. It was so powerful. It helped me understand my relationship patterns, my career patterns, and a lot of my family patterns. And this was just in one hour session. So I decided to actually take a mentorship with this astrologer afterwards and started to learn astrology through her. And after that, I started to go to a few more mentors in the astrology space and learn from them, take a lot of courses, read a lot of books. And then I finally launched my astrology practice in January of 2021. And ever since then, I've been reading birth charts for people. And also I've been incorporating astrology into my brand strategy work since my background is in graphic design and brand strategy. That's amazing. And I love that you married both of those things with um, how impactful it, it was for you and can be for other people. One thing for me, when I have kind of dipped my toe into astrology is it feels like the more I learn, the less I realize I know, and it can feel overwhelming. So if someone has had that experience, where do you suggest that they start with their learning and education around astrology? Really find someone, an astrologer that they really resonate with, that they feel very compelled to, and they resonate with their story, they resonate with their brand, or they resonate with their voice, and just sign up for their newsletter or sign up and listen to their podcast and slowly start to dip your toes into astrology that way, because that's going to get you a bit more, a bit more familiar, a bit more comfortable and see if they have other offerings like courses, or I, I know for myself, I have YouTube videos for people if they just are like curious about, you know, their sun, moon and rising sign. So find out what offerings they have and why you feel very compelled to a specific astrologer and see what you can learn from them. I love that um, idea. And I love that you used the word slowly, because I know for myself, a lot of times I want to dive in and learn all the things and be an expert as quickly as I can. And sometimes if there's so much information, that's what kind of makes me take a step back and be like, well, now I can't even dive into this world because there's so much to know. So I really like that you use the word slowly and with things that are as simple as a newsletter. On that idea, for a long time, I felt disconnected 
to astrology because I'm a Gemini. And interestingly enough, my husband is a Gemini and his brother is a Gemini. And we're all so different. And my brother-in-law, he uses the fact that he's a Gemini in like daily interactions, like, oh yeah, I did that because I'm a Gemini. And I always felt very disconnected to my sign because what is put out to the masses is that Geminis are two-faced. And I always felt like I was very authentic and that never really resonated with me. So what would you say to others who are like, oh, I'm a Scorpio and they're just nasty all the time and that's not me. How do we kind of like disconnect from what the masses understand as the ideas of what a sign should be? That's such a great question. So we are more than just one sign, which I think is such a beautiful thing and a lot of people don't know. So if you don't resonate with your sun sign, which for you, it would be Gemini. I would say to explore looking into your moon sign and your rising sign and understand that we have all the zodiac signs in our birth chart. And by understanding the energy of our birth chart and where is that concentration of energy in our birth charts, then we can kind of uncover, okay, this is why I don't feel so much as a Gemini as other people who claim that they are a Gemini. That's one way to frame it. But then also, I think it's reminding ourselves that mass media really just distorts the truth in a lot of cases. And for each zodiac sign, there is the highest vibration of that zodiac sign. And then there's this lowest vibration of a zodiac sign. And it's understanding, okay, what is the highest vibration of a Gemini or as an example? So, for a Gemini, the only way where it can feel very two-faced is only if they're in their lowest vibration and they don't, they're not self-aware. However, when someone is in a place where they are taking aligned action, they know themselves, they can see how they are interacting with others. Gemini is such a beautiful sign. It's, it's I love Gemini as a sign. It has this beautiful ability to connect with other people. There's this duality with Gemini that we can kind of reframe two-faced as duality. And that's such a beautiful quality to have. Geminis can connect with anyone and talk to anyone about anything. And that's such a great skill set. Geminis are very curious. They're very exciting to talk to. They have amazing stories and they're able to connect different ideas together. They are able to help others connect with other people. And I would see them as connectors in this way. They really need a sounding board and they can really grow through partnerships and relationships. And this is why it's so important to know the high vibrational energy of a sign, because those are all amazing qualities that everyone would love to have, right? So would you say that you have those qualities? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm big into like personality tests and like I know my Enneagram and I know my Myers-Briggs and things like that. And pe- a lot of times people feel like taking those tests, they're put into a box. But for me, like the understanding is when I'm, like you said, operating in a very healthy space versus a very stressed space, those qualities manifest themselves very differently. So there are positives like being an Enneagram three, but when I'm Enneagram three in stress, like it's not, it's not great. (laughs) But understanding that about myself helps me give myself grace and like space between the stimulus and response of what I want to put out into the world. Yes, for sure. I love that example. And I think that's a beautiful way to communicate it. And I also want to mention that Geminis are amazing communicators. They're ruled by Mercury. So they love communication. The fact that you're doing this podcast is also a very Gemini thing to do. So I honestly love your explanation of that because the way you framed it as someone in their very healthy state in comparison to an unhealthy stress state. I think that's a great example. Like you said, the mass media 
they are there to get our attention and keep us reading that article or on that social media or keep clicking on to the next thing. And so really understanding like their motives behind it of why, oh, Scorpios are X, Y, and Z and Aries are in the clouds and things like that is their reasoning behind it and kind of stepping back from it and getting curious about the deeper parts of it. Yes, exactly. And I think the beautiful thing with astrology is it's understanding that there's so much depth to it and to understand that there is this way of approaching astrology that can be very interesting and very exciting. However, if you're stuck in like the surface level astrology of mass media and someone is kind of pointing out all like these negative traits, but they're not really stating anything positive, then you can kind of tell that that person is doing that for like a different motive. I do believe astrology can help us really understand some of our shadow sides and our shadow selves and help us under uncover why we act a certain way in a very stressed situation or why we have this emotional response in situations that can be super, super helpful for us to be aware of so that we can change that. And we can also show love to those parts of ourselves when we kind of act in a way that we don't necessarily love. Mm -hmm. I love that so much, like talking about shadow work and like shining a light on that and like showing that part of ourselves love instead of like locking it in a closet. So how, how do people do that? Like if you see this part of your birth chart, I would really look into writing down the evidence of how you have shown the healthy manifestations of that sign and also writing down the more lower vibrational stress states of how you reacted in a state and how that corresponds to that sign and see, okay, I understand this. I'm going to forgive myself for these traits. I understand that this was either a coping mechanism or this was something I learned in childhood and I had to react in a survival mode because of this. So by understanding why we do the things we do, astrology can help us give ourselves more grace when we understand the deeper meaning behind, okay, this is why this sign reacts this way because they were taught this as a kid. And now you can give yourself a lot more love and compassion to your childhood self and do more inner child healing work because in the end, I really believe astrology can give us more self-love. It can allow us to really heal different parts of ourselves if we allow it to. I had an interview last week with someone talking about neuroplasticity and maybe like in your childhood based on your astrology, your neural pathway was to react in a certain way. And now that you're aware of it and you're bringing intention and attention to how you typically react. Now I'm going to create a new new neural pathway of this is how I want to react. This is how I want to show up to the world. And so it's really cool. Like sometimes when I talk about like manifestation or astrology, it can feel kind of woo woo, but there's science behind it too. Yes, for sure. And I think it's also reminding ourselves like astrology has been around for thousands of years. And I personally feel like it's been studied for so long. It was in universities, taught in universities for centuries before the churches found out like, hey, maybe we shouldn't teach this. This gives too much power to the people. And I think it's interesting to look into the history of astrology in this way and understand that there's this beautiful tool that people can use to understand themselves in a deeper way. And when you're able to see why you act a certain way or 
why you feel a certain way or what that reaction really stems from, then you're able to understand, okay, how do I want to change things for myself? And who do I want to be? What is the most authentic version of myself? I think that's why it's so interesting to learn different parts of ourselves through astrology and through different signs. So we've talked a lot about astrology and like our life and lifestyle, but one of the really cool offerings that you have is brand strategy sessions that are super aligned with someone's astrology for entrepreneurs. So how can business owners use astrology and their understanding of it to align their business as a whole and maybe guide decisions around it? What I love about astrology is it can really show us our blind spots and our limiting beliefs based on your birth chart. And by really diving into this, we can uncover how are you holding yourself back? How are you self-sabotaging yourself? What are the narratives and stories you're telling yourself about your business and your career? And by understanding astrology for yourself, you're able to understand, okay, how am I holding myself back in my business? And how can I grow my business in a more sustainable way, in a way that feels very authentic and personal to you? I've often seen people try to copy methods and strategies from other people that they admire, but they're, then they're like, okay, why isn't this working for me personally? This isn't, this is what someone else told me to do, but it's not working for me. And the beautiful thing about astrology is it kind of shows you, okay, how can you best use your energy? What feels right for you specifically? And by understanding what works for you, then you can get a more tailored approach to your business and how to grow your business as well. Your business also has a birth chart as well. So by understanding your business's birth chart, you can kind of see, okay, how can my business thrive? How can I grow my business? What are the values of my business? And what does success look like for me personally? And not society's expectations of success, but what feels successful for me, myself and I. So I love astrology as a tool for business because by understanding yourself better, you're more self-aware as to how you're holding yourself back in terms of your business and how you can really uncover those limiting beliefs so that you can work on those and really put yourself out there more and do the things you love in a more authentic, creative way. Mm, that's so good. And it's so good because, you know, I have been like, I, and I know a lot of entrepreneurs do this, is they align their identity with their business. So the fact that you're talking about how your business has its own birth chart, like if there's a failure in my business, that means I'm a failure. I'm bad. I'm wrong. But when you decouple that and say, I have a relationship with my business and it's its own entity, it has its own values. guide, And I, I have a relationship again, and I put a lot of energy into it, but it doesn't define me as a human being. I think that is really, really powerful for entrepreneurs. Yes, I love that reminder. I think it's so important because it's its own separate identity in itself. Your business is its own thing. And I think I personally have struggled with that as well, like not putting so much pressure on my business because I think it's this representation of who I am or my self-worth and self-value if it fails or if there's a failed launch or all these things. So I love that you talked about that because I really believe that by understanding it in terms of it being its own separate identity and self, then you can separate the two. Yeah. But if someone is listening and they're like, okay, you have convinced me I want to dip my toe into understanding astrology, where would you suggest that they start? Sign up for someone's newsletter, like an astrologer's newsletter. You can listen to their podcasts, read some books on astrology. You can also attend events. There's new moon and full moon events that 
people host. I personally host new moon and full moon events every month. And it's a great way to get a little snippet of astrology and how to incorporate it into your daily life, which I love. Thank you so much. I could talk forever about this, but we are running up on our time. So I'd love to dive into the lightning round questions. Are you ready? Yes. Awesome. What is a must read book? I'm going to share my mentor's book. So this is Your Destiny by Eliza Kelly. Honestly, such a great way to dip your toes into astrology. And you recommended that to me a while ago, and I am reading it. And it's it's so good. And it breaks it down into bite-sized pieces that are really digestible. So I second your recommendation. What does creativity mean to you? Oh, an emotional, spiritual response to something within yourself and how to put that out into the universe. Yes. And I love that you didn't define it as anything specifically. It's like, however you want that to go into the world, that is creative. That's really cool. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? My professor once told me, life's the game, learn how to play. That stuck with me for years. I still think about that to this day. So I'm going to share life's a game, learn how to play. What is something that's on your bucket list? I'd love to travel to Japan or Portugal or Hawaii. Oh, that's so interesting. It's like they're all such different places and spaces. Yes, they look beautiful. Very I'm cool. like, oh my goodness. What is the coolest shit that you've done in the last year or are currently working on? I just completed my second course on finding your fulfillment, embracing the nodes of fate. And this course was very transformational for me just to go through and create because I love helping people understand their life patterns and how your astrology can show you where you're heading this lifetime, your purpose, and what you're trying to learn. Whereas your south node is your comfort zone. It's something you can get trapped in. And a lot of people operate in their south node energy of recurring patterns and repeating patterns of past lives. So with understanding your north and south node, you can really embrace more of your destiny. You can embrace more of your purpose this lifetime and just find more fulfillment and flow. So I've been super happy to complete that course because it was honestly such a fun course to work on. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. And we didn't even get into that around like fate and manifest destiny and like all of that, but that's so, that's so good. We'll definitely put a link to all of that stuff in the show notes, but where can people find you? You can find me on my podcast, which is Moonsign Insight on Substack. You can also find my newsletter there. It's attached to my Substack. So you can check that out through Moonsign Insight as well. And I also have a YouTube channel for Moonsign Insight as well. And you can find me on Instagram and TikTok under my name, Taddy Petkovic. And hopefully you can leave the exact spelling because sometimes there's impersonators that we have to be careful of. <laughs> talking about impersonators, I didn't, I was thinking about this when you were talking and then I never like connected the dots after. But I think when you were talking about how people can feel like, oh, they did this and I did the exact same thing and it didn't work for me. Like that's such a good example of Like, even if you think that a market is saturated, knowing no one is doing it the exact way that you would do it. So try it, just do it. Just if you feel called to do something, I'm sure it is in your astrology somewhere in your North node to go after it. So that's really, really wonderful. Um, Thank you so much for this conversation. This was so fun. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. I loved your questions. Thank you so much for this. Definitely check her out on Instagram. She always has really engaging content there. The link to our podcast will also be in the show notes. And I would love to hear what your sign is. Do you feel connected to it? Do uh, Do you feel like you have a place to start with it? Let me know. If you like this podcast, High Vibe Table Talks, don't forget to subscribe. We will see you next week. And remember, the big dreams and small steps will transform your life.